What's up, everybody? This is Carmine Davis, and you are watching and listening to The Carmine Davis Show. What is tea? Um, I'm back. I had um, a brief hiatus. I lost my baby, Pinky. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was grieving and going through bereavement and still trying to promote... Um, you know, my release, my latest release, I know what boys like. Um, you know, it was sudden. You know, my baby, she's my oldest. She's been with me through everything. She was like my executive producer. Like, she was everything to me. And so I've been mourning her loss and grieving with it and intense therapy sessions and counseling sessions and all kind of stuff, just getting through it. And now I'm back. Um, keep us in your prayers. My baby's on the rainbow road or is that what they call it the rainbow road but i can't wait to see her again and i'm finally okay speaking of like intense therapy sessions this show is sponsored by betterhelp.com shout out to my therapist phil i met him on betterhelp.com and he has been amazing and when you lose a pet you learn that it's hard to explain that feeling to everyone around you you know some people get it most don't. And that's why it's so important to have someone like a therapist in your corner who knows that being a pet dad is such a large part of my identity. You know, I have my two girls, you know, I have Pink and I have Luna now. It was such a huge part of everything that, you know, I had going on. And I'm thankful to my therapist for helping me get through this process and help me go through the stages of grief and find peace in the situation. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without betterhelp.com. Um, and I'm offering you guys 10% off in your first month. Try it. Embrace therapy. The great thing about betterhelp.com is that you get to go through and find a smorgasbord of different types of therapists that follow um, pro LGBTQ, Christian. Uh, I think there's like um, um, any type of religion, any type of walk of life, dealing with all kind of anger issues, sobriety, um, crisis, um, all kind of things that you could think of. Check the box and get matched with a therapist today at betterhelp.com um, slash Carmine Davis. That's better, H E L P.com slash Carmine Davis. Um, but you guys can come here for all that. I finally, I tried to record the show last week and I was in tears, child. I was trying to make it and I couldn't do it. So um, I'm good now to do the show. But during that time, right, we missed a lot. And you guys know I've been watching Diddy and we've been talking about Diddy and everything that's going on with him. And apparently, Don Richard has spoken up about what was going on with her and the things that she's seen with Danny Kane. If you guys haven't heard, you've been under a rock. She basically accused him of sexual acts like abuse, sexual abuse, sexual fondling, um, you know, abuse in front of her, abuse with her, beside her, like all kinds of stuff. And it was damning. The stuff. And I'm glad she came up and spoke about what was going on. But this morning, child, more information about Diddy has come up and it's not looking good, okay? According to lovebscott.com, Diddy indicted on sex trafficking racketeering charges. Like I said before, I said this like a long time ago, they were going to get him for racketeering. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, but let's not delight in somebody else's, you know, sadness. Okay, Diddy is officially facing serious criminal charges following his arrest in New York on Monday night. He's been charged with three counts, racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking by force, fraud or corrosion, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Um, according to the indictment from 2008 to the present, members of the Combs Enterprise allegedly engaged in sex trafficking, forced labor, interstate transportation for purposes of prostitution, coercion, and enti enticement to engage in prostitution, narcotics off offenses, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. According to the indictment, the purpose of the Combs Enterprises was to operate 
the global business and the media, entertainment, and lifestyle industries. The purpose also included preserving Diddy's power and fulfilling his personal desire, especially relations to his sexual gratifications, including through the exploitation of women and the use of commercial sex workers. The indictment mentions the now famous freak off parties, calling them elaborate and produced sex performances that Combs arranged, directed, masturbated during, and often electronically recorded. Um, the indictment alleges Combs lured women into his orbit under the pretense of a romantic relationship and then used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sex acts with male commercial sex workers. After the freak-offs, Combs and the victims typically received um, IV fluids to recover from the physical exertion and drug use. The indictment does not include details of, on the kidnapping allegations other than they occurred in California. His lawyer, Mark Agnifilio, Mark Agnifilio, said, going into the courthouse, he will fight like hell to get his client released on bail. Agnifilio, Agnifilio said his client is not only not guilty, but outright innocent. Diddy will appear before a judge Tuesday morning where the charges will be read. Hopefully this means justice for all Diddy's alleged victims will finally be served. <sighs> We have been talking about this forever. And like, it reminds me, like we said, I've been wa we've been watching Diddy on the Can't Stop, Won't Stop um, saga. Um, it reminds me of the, the R. Kelly saga. You know, um, seems like you're ready to go back and listen to those. Um, if you get a chance to, to um, we followed the whole saga. And um, it's similar to me. Like these are, these are accusations that we've heard since the 90s, you know, like in early 2000s. Things that we've seen out in public, like things that he's done, things that we've heard. And when there's smoke, there's fire, right? And I would, I have been to some, some sex parties and I would be terrified to go to a Diddy freak off. Like it just seems like a mix made in hell, even for a bitch like me who, child, I have fun. Like, but I don't believe in drugs. I don't believe in drugging someone. I believe in, if I have to take an IV fluid the next day to get through the, like, I, don't, I just want to sleep in until two, you know, take a really, like, long shower when I get home and sleep it off, take an ibuprofen. That's the kind of party I like. This sounds like it's something completely different. And it was, like, it makes sense bringing women in and, with the allure of it being Diddy and literally running them down with other men. Like, that sounds like a Diddy party. <sighs> this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. But, like, I still want to know, though, would y'all go to a Diddy party, like a freak-off party? Like, not the latter ones. Like, I don't want to be in attendance, especially with Justin Bieber's there. Like, something about Bieber makes my ass itch. Like, I don't want to be anywhere near Bieber. Like, <laughs> he just seems like, Diddy and Bieber just seem like where, at a party at 3 o'clock in the morning, that's where dreams go to die. Like, I wouldn't want to be anywhere with them. Like, I feel like I would, that's the moment when I would go home, right? But, like, back in the days when J-Lo was there, like, Dame Dash, Aaliyah, those days, like, you know, like, they seem so alluring. Like, the white couch parties and all those things. Like, would you go if you knew these things, like, were happening? Like, because we knew. Like, we kind of knew that a Diddy party was a freak-off. Like, it was... You know, I think I would get my purse and leave around like two, three o'clock. Like I want to stay long enough to eat because I don't believe in drinking and not eating. That's one of my big things. My peppies do not invite me to come to your house for a party and you only have alcohol and you have no drinks. I mean, no food. Like I don't believe in finger food too much either. Bitch, I like to eat the fuck up when I'm drinking. Okay. And then like if you're passing a blunt, bitch, like you better have like at least call a pizza in or something. So I'm going to drink and eat. I don't smoke with everybody because everybody is smoking the same thing. So I would not smoke the blunt with them. Um, and I would probably just stay out of curiosity. I'm a curious bitch. So I probably would like round up 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. That's when I think everybody would be on the pills. 
you know, the the real bitches who like the the I got a dead job type of bitches would have been already and they know what's up. Like they would have went home, ducked out. But I would have stayed until like two or three. Like when I could see the weird shit going on. Like I wanna watch. You know, I would wanna see. And then like around two or three, like, I'm gonna grab my purse and get out of there. But Diddy seems like the type to not let you go. Like I feel like he's like, if you're there, you're stuck there after three o'clock. Like you're not leaving. And like that's probably where the drugs and everything can involve, like roofing people, like, no. I don't like this at all, like, I don't like this at all. Leave a comment below. Would you go to a Diddy party? Um, would you, like, like, have you heard anything about a Diddy party? What's your interesting, like, we all have heard little, like, urban legends about a Diddy party. What's your favorite urban legend about a Diddy party? Leave a comment below. Um, and if you're new to the show, make sure you guys, um, um, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. I don't do it for my health. Follow us on all of our socials, Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis, Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis Show, TikTok.com slash at Carmine Davis, Twitter.com slash Carmine Davis. And um, we're going to move on to the next hot topic. Um, say what now? Uh, from LoveyScott.com, fans are heated by Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty's use of the F slur. Okay, let me read it before I give my judgment. Nicki Minaj's husband is in the hot seat again. Fans are upset by Kim and Petty's use of the F slur. During an August 30th TikTok live stream, the Chun Li rapper encouraged fans not to let anyone steal their joy. However, things took a left turn when Petty, who was sitting behind her, used a derogatory term. Let me see. Don't you let anybody or anything steal your motherfucking joy. That's right. Especially the famous little fuck boy. Okay. She knew that an eye. Um, that's right, especially the faggots or fuckboys, Petty said. Oh, God. The verbal reaction was swift and now has resulted in backlash online, especially since Minaj has a huge number of LGBTQIA plus fans. Many of her supporters from the community have embraced her bold persona, her music, and her advocacy for individuality. However, her silencer and Petty's use of the F slur has left them feeling disappointed and betrayed. As a celebrity with massive influence, Minaj's words and actions are, or lack thereof, carry away. Her fans expect her to be an ally, especially when someone in their inner circle uses her harmful language. Um, on social media, the backlash was immediate. Fans expressed outrage over Petty's choice of words and Minaj's silence on the matter. The, the concerns highlighted the hurtful nature of the F slur. That's when Nikki called y'all behind y'all's backs. <laughs> That's not funny. Oh my God, I'm a part of the problem. Um, meanwhile, her fan base consists of gay men and trans people, but this is who y'all giving your money to. Um... It's not the first time. I'm almost sure that's how they call the barbs when the camera is off. Um, however, some social media users didn't take offense to the petty use of the F slur. Um, as the live stream replay continues to circulate online, it's clear that many fans are waiting for an apology or an acknowledgement from Minaj. Sally claims the Sally fans claims. This isn't the first time Petty has used a homophobic slur. The use of homophobic slurs remain a serious issue. Public figures and those close to them are expected to set an example. Whether Minaj will address her husband's comments remains to be seen. Um, also, to throw this in, if you didn't know, Nicki Minaj is being sued. In addition to the incident stemming from her husband's use of the derogatory term, the rap star is currently dealing with a lawsuit from a fan, according to the Vibe magazine. A fan alleges that her husband attacked him during the 2020 Super Bowl, amongst other things. Tanir Peak is suing the Barbie Royal rapper for $5 million for damages um, to his reputation, emotional distress, and financial loss. Peak claims she went... On, in on him during a 2017 live stream with over 100,000 viewers. And over the years, she's continued to bully him during a station head session. Then in 2020, 
had assaulted him during the Super Bowl. Mr. Pete has been harassed, but has been harassing Nikki on social media for years and on in to no avail. Menage's lawyer, Judd Burstein, told TMZ he was now he has now graduated to seeking to shake her down financially with manifestly false allegation and legally frivolous claims. He will regret having gone down this disputable road when he is forced to pay her legal fees as required by California law. Do you think Nicki Minaj will apologize for Petty's F slur usage? Leave a comment below. I don't think so. I'm going to tell you. We cannot. Now, I am an honorary bar, you know, but I know Nicki. And once you know someone, you have to set a certain type of expectation of them. And one, she calls people faggots. Like she, you know what I mean? And then there's also not, I am not like saying it's right. But what I do know is that people in New York use it, but different, like it's interchangeable with fuck boys. Like, like you said, faggots and fuck boys. Like it could be a whole woman being a fag, like you acting like a faggot. Like that's how they use it. And it's ugly and it's horrible and it should never be used. Never, ever, 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 ever should be used. Like, but we have to set our expectations on people. She's made rap songs using the uh, like phrase. Like she has called people sissies and raps. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we understand that it means something different to Nikki and it's a cultural thing to Nikki. And she, if you think, listen, if you think Nikki Minaj is going to sit her ass up there and apologize for using a, her husband, using a word that she has used for 10, 12, 30 fucking years on wax, bitch, you can... You can sit your faggot ass down. No. <laughs> you can, girl, save it. Like, that's not going to happen. And I'm sorry to my, my gay community. Like, it's something that we have to deal with and we should speak up. Now, we should speak up, but lower our expectations. Lower our expectations. Lord. Okay, let's move on to the next hot topic. But before we do, make sure we, you know, follow us on, on Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis. Instagram.com slash Carmine Davis show. TikTok.com slash Carmine Davis. Um, <laughs> Twitter.com slash Carmine Davis. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nikki is so funny. Um, let's go on to the next hot topic. Okay, and speaking of my queer people, this show is pro-gay, pro-woman. What am I? Oh, <laughs> it's been a tough month, okay? This show is pro gay, pro woman, and pro um, pro black. <laughs> Can't forget my about my niggas. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm sorry. So she look what Nikki's done to me. Okay, like her influence. Like she's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay, let's move on to the next topic from lovebeescott.com. Speaking of my LGBTQIA plus community, the end has come. Drag reality TV show, We're Here, canceled after four seasons. HBO's hit drag reality TV show, We're Here, was canceled after four seasons. Um, the show featured drag queens giving makeovers to members of the LGBTQIA community plus community in small towns across the U.S. The first three seasons starred RuPaul Drag Race alum Bob the Drag Queen, Eureka O'Hara, and Sh Sh Shangela. Now, pause, okay? So, I got in trouble for doing a drop like a year ago, and I kept calling her, Sh what did I call her? Shangela? No, Shangela is what I kept calling her. And I think it's Shangela. I'm gonna fuck up my name. Okay, y'all sit y'all's asses up there and 
do something like this and not fuck up a word or girl fuck y'all like she knew what I was talking about and what she did was wrong Shangela thanks but thank you guys for com correcting me thank you guys thank you dolls all right crying 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 here I come Priyanka, Sesha Valor, Latrice LaRoyale, and Jada Essence Hall took over hosting duties in season four. Um, the cancellation leaves fans mourning the end of a groundbreaking series that amplified queer voices and celebrated the transformative power of drag. Um, We're Here quickly became more than just reality. The show was a cultural force. The series took drag into the heart of conservative rural America with this powerful stories of acceptance, self-expression, and resilience. The show helped demystify and humanize queer culture for viewers who may not have had much exposure to it. it. Each episode featured a touching combination of personal stories and bold preferences, helping foster understanding between LGBTQIA plus individuals in their communities. The drag queens on the show didn't just offer makeovers. They facilitated emotional transformations. They helped participate the participants and their families confront internalized shame, fear, and ignorance. By highlighting the everyday struggles of the queer people in these smaller towns, we're here brought visibility to a demographic often overlooked in mainstream media. Oh. It's a shame I never watched it. <laughs> I feel like I'm a part of the problem. Like now I gotta go support it, but maybe too little too late. Uh, the emotional depth of the show combined with the larger than life performances made it beloved, made it a beloved series. Its blend of entertainment and social justice activism resonated with audiences inside and outside of the LGBTQIA community. Uh, by encouraging dialogue on queer acceptance in places where it's most needed, we're here made a um, lasting mark on American drag and queer culture. Um, HBO cancels We're Here after four seasons. Despite the impact and dedicated fan base, HBO canceled We're Here. The news shocked many fans who were hoping the show would continue to grow. While HBO hasn't provided a specific, specific reason for the cancellation, it follows a recent trend of networks and streaming services cutting back on LGBTQIA plus content. With the fourth season showcasing a new lineup of drag superstars, some believe the series was moving into an exciting new phase, but it now stands as the final chapter. Um, although the current run of our show has ended, we're here, messages of love and acceptance has already been already made a lasting impact for our LGBTQIA plus community um, across the country. Series co-creator Johnny Ingram and Stephen Warren said on Instagram, creating We're Here was a dream come true and our hearts are, are overflowing with love. We are grateful to the HBI, I mean HBO, <laughs> All these acronyms, shop. We're grateful <laughs> to HBO for giving us the opportunity to our fierce drag mothers and drag community, to our production team at IPC and all of those who shared their hearts and stories with us. It took a lot of courage, sequence, and sweat to make We're Here. And we are so proud to leave behind four Peabody Critics' Choice Awards GLAAD and Television Academy Award-winning seasons that are wildly entertaining, enlightening, and giving hope to anyone struggling to live their truth. HBO's decision to cancel We're Here comes at a time when queer representation in media remains a hot topic, especially when with increasing political and social scrutiny on LGBTQIA plus rights. The series' ability to make meaningful connection in parts of the country where LGBTQIA plus individuals often feel marginalized was a powerful asset. Its cancellation raises concerns about the future of queer-centered programming, particularly in reality TV. With We're Here canceled after four seasons, fans will undoubtedly feel the absence deeply, but the show's message of love, acceptance, and pride will live on. Um, leave a comment below. Are you sad to see that We're Here is gone? Did you watch the show? What was some of your favorite moments? Give me an episode that I should start on, because I didn't watch it. But now, however, as a queer creator, I should be more supportive of them, of course, like of other um, shows and all those things. I just never watched it. I don't, I don't watch many things, to be completely fair. And um, I will say, though, I don't think that it's an end of it all. Um, there are so many shows that get canceled, you know, left to right, queer, black, all those things. We won't stop. Queer creators, we're just not going to stop. It's, it's just... Whether we got to go under, we got to go high, we got to go, you know, in the lands, honey, the valleys, the peaks, we're going to create. It's what we do. And um, 
No, I mean, I don't, I don't see it as an end at all, and we should not let it be an end. Um, I'm going to go watch the show and support, and y'all keep me in the know. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, period. So, and I, but I do know the importance of you guys sounding off and supporting us, um, queer creators, and um, you know, it's. It's so important because there's so many queer voices out there. And in order for us to be um, sharing our faces, sharing our stories, sharing our content, sharing what we're, our messages and what we're all about is important to help, like I said, demystify and help bring us into the homes and help people um, come to terms with not only the queer people around them, but their own queer identities as well. And... Um, so no, we're not quitting, and I I want I'm going to support and do my part to be a better supporter of the queer creators. I want you guys to be a better supporter in the queer community. And you can start by subscribing to the show. <laughs> See how I did that? I swung it back. You guys can start by subscribing and commenting to the show. Hit the bell button. Follow me on Instagram at com slash Carmen Davis. Uh, Instagram at com slash Carmen Davis Show. TikTok dot com slash at Carmen Davis. Uh, Twitter dot com slash Carmen Davis. And um, that's the show. So I love you guys so much. Thank you guys. Keep your prayers around me and my baby Luna. We just lost Pinky. Go stream. I know a boy's life. I'm loving the reaction from you guys um, on my new song. Um, keep streaming it on carmadavis.com slash music. Um, I love you guys.